Hello everybody. It's the Minutes with Milo Show video edition. So this isn't live. This is one of these regular videos that I'm going to try to shoot more of. And I say that and I never do. But anyway, I'm going to try to do one today. There's a little project that I've got. I've got many, many projects. <laughs> Way too many projects. But anyway, you're in my basement. And don't mind the clutter. I mean, I'm in year, like, I don't know, 18 or something or trying to get this straightened out. So I'll get it eventually. It's taken me this long to get it this straight. So, you know, kudos to me. But anyway, what I'm going to do a little video on today was uh, I have a Harbor Freight tire changer, a manual tire changing tool. I'm ordering some parts for it because it's not super friendly. And what I'm ordering, it's going to be off Amazon, is a centering cone. And if you've ever seen uh, a real tire changing machine, it's got a cone shape. You put the tire over the on the machine, you spin this cone chain for this adapter down, and it centers the wheel on the tire changer. And the Harbor Freight uh, apparatus, I'll show you here in a minute, but anyway. It just comes with this little devil here, and that holds the rim down, but it doesn't really center the rim. So they make a cone that slides over the shaft, fit the wheel on, you slide the cone down, it centers the tire, you put this on there, then you spin it all down, and it holds the tire centered on the changing machine. But in order to do that, you need to know the diameter of the hub, the center hole, the bore, whatever, I can't remember its name, but there's a hole in the middle of the wheel. That's what you need to know. Because if you buy the wrong cone, it won't fit. Now, I've looked at them, and they say, oh, it fits most SUVs, cars, and all that stuff. I don't own most. As you can tell, 620, for some reason, the center hole on those rims are huge, bigger than a standard pickup truck bore. And it's all because it has drum brakes. It's a thing. All right, so I'm going to show you how I measure to make sure I get the right, not with a tape measure. I could have done it with a tape measure and got it rough. Uh, and the way I'm doing it, I'm still getting it kind of rough, but it's more precise. So I'm going to use calipers, but you can't get a, uh, a slide dial caliper, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the names of these things. I'll show it to you. You can't get it in there, and I'll show you why. So I've got a little, it's going to be a two-step process. 14 steps, maybe. But anyway, let me, uh, I'll show you the tire changer where this goes. Then I'll show you my problem, and I'll show you, I'm trying to use these, which I think are called, this is a slide. It doesn't have a spinning wheel. Very cheap very rudimentary, works okay. And I don't have to worry about dropping it or breaking it or bending it, because it's only a few dollars. I've got a nice set that gives you a digital readout in inches or millimeters or whatever. It's not gonna be that precise. And then this little critter, I don't know its name, but this is what I'm gonna use. And I'll show this to you. And so we've gotta take this, do something with it, then use this, and get it. All right. So I got to have my spectacles on. And let's see. Let's make sure. Yeah, we're recording. I'm gonna pick you up here. Here is the manual tire changer. And maybe you've seen these before. Let me get this other piece. This is my oil section. Everything oil and chainsaw goes in here. So I recycle my oils, all that old oil stuff. I try to be conscientious. So, this is where that piece goes. Now, I've got a piece of plastic here that come off the bottom of a gallon jug. Just because when you put a rim on there, you set the rim down, this goes, this goes up through the lug nut hole to kind of keep it on there. But, I put that on there to help protect some of the finish. I did a couple of aluminum rims, and I didn't want the 
the little star to scratch them up. So I put a piece of plastic. But anyway, this is where the rim will go. You put the cone on, then you put this on top of it. And then this is the little dilly boy that you screw down and tighten up to keep the uh, rim secure, okay? So, the cone goes below here. The cone has to fit this shaft so it goes slides down there. It's going to be a little sloppy, probably like that. But then, it can't be so small that it falls through this hole in the center of the rim. Okay? So, this is what I've got to do. I cannot get... Let's see if I can find a place to show you. Let me scoot you back here. Can we sit you on this drum right here? and tilt it forward a little bit right there okay so as you can tell i can't really get this on there because the bearing part sticks out the wheel bearing part sticks out and this is typical with an old car especially if it has four wheel drum so this is the part where you measured inside the diameter and this is where you should measure the outside so if I wanted to measure this, that would be cool, right? I could just do that and measure it, and that would be fine. But I want to measure this in here, so I need to get the inside part. Well, I can't get it. That's in the way. And even if I took the rim off, you can see the depth measuring part gets in my way. I couldn't get it down in there. Just not going to happen. So, enter these little dudes. Now these are spring loaded because this is a piece of steel and as you squeeze it, see, it's spring loaded. And then this sets, helps you set the width. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna open these up to really big, really big, okay? Now what I can do is I can get these in behind the hub, okay, and when I get it set in there, then I'll twist that down where it just takes, see how that works? I'm just inside the, the wheel. Now that's pretty close to the real diameter. Up or down, I can't move it up or down, wall or in there. Okay, so that is the inside diameter of the bore on this rim. So then what you do, eh, let's take it this way so you can kind of see the numbers. You put this, and this is tricky with just doing it this way, but you put that, so you use your calipers now to measure the distance between there. And once you get it, then you can read it. So this is 92 millimeters, or three, eight, three inches, four, five, six, seven, eight, and five eighths. Three and five eighths inches is the bore. So now I go to Amazon, and I have to find the right cone that was small enough to go onto that, but large enough to where it doesn't fall through here. And I've already done it. And I'm gonna order one. It's like, oh man, they're like $20 for the large size. And it goes up to 4.4 inches uh, in diameter. So it'll fit the shaft on the tire changer it's 4.4, which is 113 millimeters. And so it won't fall through the hole. And you think, well, that's just for one wheel. Well, I've measured a couple of other wheels and they all have a pretty good size hole. 
in the middle. So those are the ones I'm going to get. But that's the way I do it. And you could have done it with the tape measure. But it's on the vehicle. If you want to do it on the vehicle like that, or if it's a deep wheel, like some of these, you know, mags are and things, and you want to know the diameter, you can go on the internet, and there's places where you can look up factory rims and what the bore is on the center, the center hole. You can do that, or you can do what I've done. Now, this technique works if you want to, if you need to measure the bore of a cylinder and you don't have a specific cylinder bore tool that's got the spring on it and all that, the dial indicator and that kind of stuff. In a rough man's world, you could do it this way. You could buy one of those, I don't even know what you call them. You buy one of those, got them as a, a group at Harbor Freight, and you put them in there, get the size, then take the caliper and then you measure that size. And it gets it done. So that's my tip. So I'm going to try to do some more videos. I'm actually trying to put floors in my little Datsun. I've been working on it. And I decided this time I'm not buying floors. I'm going to make them. I've bought floors before for cars and uh, cut out the old ones. But I think this time I'm going to make mine. And it's going to, it's going to turn out pretty junky. But I'm just not going to do it. I just wanted to do it. Do it myself. So anyway, I appreciate anybody that watches this. Leave me a comment. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thursdays at 9 is the live show with Minutes of Milo. And I'm, I've got my little remote here. Uh, I'm going to do a review of this. It's kind of like a GoPro. I don't know how good the video quality is going to be. But it's a little bit better than the phone I'm using. It's a little easier to use. There's a lot more storage on here than there is on that phone that I use as a camera. But anyway, all right, I'll talk to you at the next time. See ya.